Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Northern Arena Beat Invitational presented by Bell. We've got our second matchup of the night, Team Fox versus now Team Duop, I guess previously known as Evernovas, but looking for the formal name change to Duop. I'm Zyori, joined again by Trent, we're from, or from Mod Packs rather. Hello, Trent. How are you, sir? What's up, man? Right, you feeling? can call me Trent. Trent, we've Trent Mott Pack. You know, okay. we're, we're cool. We're on a first name basis. That's cool. Honestly, there's, there's too many Mots in this whole Moonduck thing anyway, but what can you do? It's true. You need to rebrand yourself. There, there aren't any that. other Trents that I, I can't. Know. I can't go back. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't want to be a Gareth. I mean, honestly. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> sorry, Shout sorry, out to I, GBCast. I, 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 I love you. <laughs> <laughs> harsh, harsh. All right, well, do up, do up. Boys, apparently, you know, make a Reddit thread or something. Maybe you'll get it changed on the official website. Seems to be the way to do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're here. They're no longer Evernova, Evernovas. And that um, lovely five bars up there singing high. It's going to be Mason. That is Mason. So I'm sure that's your KK Kona. Yeah. Many yeah. fans in the chat, I'm sure. So, and it looks like we're that they've got the proper line. Mason, do I see a Snake King? I sure do. Is there a way to? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's Francis um, Lee himself as well, of course. All right. Yeah. Flea, AKA Francis Maneski. Lee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got a full squad, baby. And this Fox team. That's the open qualifier winner. Okay. That would explain yeah. why I don't recognize most of those names. A player named Meth. That's great. <laughs> That's good. Basically just Noobs R Us, NRS, and Viddy I see on the front page of, okay. of games quite a bit. I don't recognize so the other some, three. Some high-tier pub players here. Okay, cool. Well, uh, an exciting matchup oh, here. Some uh, recognizable faces in NA going to be on the Dyer and uh, the Qualifier team here, Old Fox. I like their logo, though. That's pretty cool. That's a nice little – they probably ripped it from somewhere. But yeah, totally. It's pretty Just cool. Google Fox, I'm sure, but, yeah, totally cool. It's like it's Maybe like they're a hoping Fox. for that Echo Fox sponsorship. Ooh, Shaq, <laughs> slam dunk it on us. We got meth. What up? I don't know if Shaq would be would be into that. Oracle first pick for Doo-Wop, and they take the Earth Spirit. All right, Fox, they've got that's, an Earth Spirit uh, player. That's Viddy's thing, yeah. All right, that's, well, perfect. That's like all, he, like, spams it, so I guess that's why. And a Timber Saw. Okay. Well, nice big bursty core. Can't go wrong with that. Very mobile. Been getting banned out quite a bit in the first phase, but this time it's going to be Kunkka and uh, Shadow Demon, and I believe... Uh, Shadow Demon, did he make it to the second phase? I know Kunkka did, but I think Shadow Demon was like first pick, second phase last game as well. So much more priority there this time. Won't be the faceless void. Nice little performance by MSS in the prior game. And as always, Draw Ranger taken out because honestly, who wants to play against Draw Ranger? Yep. Just not a fun strat. Not that she's unbeatable, but they're very high pressure, just not fun games to play against for sure. I can't, can understand that. Juggernaut, though. Good healing cast here for Duop. Oracle Jug, a lot of synergy there. We saw Jug fifth band last game. They were talking about how effective that healing ward can be with five-man fights. And if you have anything to synergize with it, uh, like a false promise, for example, it can uh, it can go a long way. Now Ursa, third band by Fox, taking out the bear. And that kind of happens, right? You see a hero do really well one game, and you're like, oh, yeah, that hero's really good against Timber Saw. Let's ban that hero. <laughs> yeah. We don't want that guy showing up here. <laughs> Yeah. Where's the Coddle? That's that's the other hero that, man, if I'm Timbersaw, Coddle and Skywrath Mage is just yeah. like the arch nemesis. And we've seen both those heroes are more than viable. And against the Timbersaw, it's, it's a world of difference when you see him in a game where he doesn't have a hard counter in the early game versus when you have that hard lockdown, just what, what feels like a forever silence on the Skywrath Mage. There's really not much Timber can do but just farm defensively, work the jungle, and... You know, try to avoid the Skywrath at all costs. It's it's pretty brutal. And Coddle, oh, God, Mana Leak. Do we even need to talk about Mana Leak? I'm sure that's getting nerfed. I, I was, like, half expecting it. Once I saw that patch, I was like, all right, here we go. Yeah. This is it. This is what I've been waiting on. I thought, you know, is that like, number Coddle. one on your list of, like, ne number one needs to be nerfed the most? I'm sure Coddle, or uh, Shadow Demon's probably going to get a little bit of hate, right? Yeah. Maybe even Kunkka, too. We'll see. Yeah, but Mana Leak is, it, it doesn't sound that bad on paper until you play against it and you realize how abusable it is if somebody's really just like tunneling on you with it in lane and it's it, it, it feels unstoppable when you're up against it, that's for sure. But speaking of unstoppable heroes, Omni Knight, fourth ban here from Duop and Morphling, now the fourth ban from Team Fox. That, uh, that NA respect for Omni Knight, man, it's kind of always been a yeah, thing dude. in the region. I can remember like back so many Canada Cups, of course, the previous name. Of the, the old beat invitational tournament but uh, always omni just made these appearances that were just never happening in other regions and it was always in these tournaments yeah so uh, a popular guy around here 
So are we going to see a, uh, another Huskar game here? Certainly possible. I guess Timber saw one of the better heroes to deal with Huskar. A lot of pure damage, a lot of burst. Yeah. Um, even Earth Wait, Spirit I mean, can be annoying with silence, you know, against the Oracle, that kind of stuff. It's a, if you have Oracle, though, I mean, they could just, like, grab a... You get a Dazzle or something, and who cares about Timbersaw? Like, at that point, yeah. your Huskar is just so annoying anyway. Yeah. That's Shadow a fair Shaman. point. Shadow Shaman. Wow. Fox switching it up a bit here. Getting some pushing prowess alongside their control. Shadow Demon... Or, pardon me, okay. Shadow Shaman Earth Spirit. An interesting support duo. Yeah, you think about, like, Shadow Shaman and Lion are those two heroes that I always picture, like, when I'm trying to picture, like, the game plan and how the team wants to play. You, you think, like... Why would you take Lion or why would you take Shadow Shaman? The Hex probably the most important thing between the two of them. Very good against uh, new materials mm -hmm. like Jug. Try and get that off uh, to lead up into a bunch of uh, consecutive CC before he can get off the spin. But when you have that nice element of adding a little bit of push, and that is one thing that drafts around a Timbersaw can suffer from. Like maybe you win the fight, but can't really push down that tower that fast. They get right. the, you know everyone's respawning that early game, but Snakes makes it easy. Helps out in the Roche Pit as well. Mm -hmm. So very uh, objective-based support. There is a lot of kill potential with an Earth Spirit Shadow Shaman combo just moving around in the early game. Huge burst oh, yeah. damage from the Ether Shock, follow-up damage from the Earth Spirit, and a lot of control between those two. So I, I could see it working, though. At the same time, these are two heroes that, if somehow Duop have a good laning stage, if they pull ahead early, two supports that really don't play well from behind. We've seen a lot of games where Shadow Shaman loses the momentum, gets picked off a few times early, can't get a fast blink dagger, and he's just food anytime uh, they find him. And same with Earth Spirit. Maybe not quite so drastically, but a hero that definitely plays better from ahead uh, than from behind. And now Duop will take a nice, beefy, but probably core potential support Night Stalker here. Not sure how they want to lane this, but some flexibility for sure. Great to have against the Shadow Shaman. I guess all these heroes, really. That yeah. huge silence is, is pretty big. It's the best. It's like a tankier Skywrath Mage uh, to help control this yeah. Timbersaw. Just being able to put out that silence there. Uh, I'm a big fan of it, the support role. It's really nice in like some of those dual lanes. Maybe if you want to run like a Darkseer with it or something. Maybe if you have a nice mid that will combo up with it as well. Or you go back for a position one, throw a Jug in the mid, depending on what you see in a matchup. Mm -hmm. but uh, the, the offlane is still very viable as well. Can fall off a little bit, so you tend to maybe think of a, a lineup that can end the game a little bit quicker if you're going to be putting him in that three roll. So we'll see if that does get handed over to uh, the yeah. old Snake King here. I think ever since the introduction of Iron Talon, position four Night Stalker feels a little bit more viable. There's always that ability to just go into the jungle and find some kind of farm, you know, get towards an item, scepter, or whatever other items you want to grab, like an armlet if you want to go a little more right-clicky. Yeah. Um, but you have that recovery tool, and that's super important on Night Stalker, and he really didn't have that before the introduction of that item. Now, Invoker, big follow-up burst damage. We go for Team Fox. A lot of just good team fight across these four heroes. A lot of control, a lot of damage, and the annoying Timbersaw who can serve as that frontliner to make space for all of his uh, squishier friends. I, I think Fox are onto something here. I mean, this, this is a pretty potent draft they've got going on. Yeah, um, Jug does do pretty well in the mid against the Invoker, though. So True. what is nice for Duob is that they now have that option of just being like, okay, we know what's going mid. We have this like ability to just throw a Juggernaut there. Maybe they'd mix it up or something and throw a Timber. I'm not sure. But yeah, the other thing I like about that, though, is that the Night Stalker, if this is a support Night Stalker, going down to that dire side off lane is going to really help pull that Earth Spirit in because Shadow Shaman won't be able to help enough with whatever else is there. Like, you can't control up a Night Stalker support plus any sort of an off laner, and that's going to pull that Earth Spirit down. Won't be able to help the Invoker mid, and maybe that'll be enough that they can apply some pressure there, like through the other mid laner, if they want to get a, maybe a better matchup up against the Invoker and really try and shut them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Could be some potential there for Duop. What do they want with their fourth? Bat it's Bat Rider. Oh, I like so that. Likely nice. their off laner now. I mean, it's a nice combo with Night Stalker. It's a yeah. little bit of sticky napalm. You're always ready to go. That's true, actually. That is really scary in lane. Like, aggro dual lane here. Do a 2-1-2 two, two, Night Stalker Bat Rider off lane with the Night Stalker kind of rotating around, supporting mid, giving the Bat Rider some of the solo XP. That could be really good. The only problem is they might just, like, half sack the Timber and send him down and just give him a stick and be like, all right, if you don't kill me by level 3, I'm just never going to die. Because <laughs> your silence won't be long enough early on in the game to do that yeah yeah that's a, a good point might be a game this sounds weird but i guess we'll see how it, it it continues but you know like a silver edge might not be a bad item for duop to consider somebody that might want to carry that a little more natively you know someone like night stalker not really so eager to farm up all the way to silver edge but the break against timbersaw makes it very easy for jug to bring him down without all that extra armor 
Oh, last band. Storm yeah, Spirit they, they and think Slark. Of Slark. They like right. that. Okay. Classic up against the Bat Rider, might as well, yep. right? Yep. Dark packed off those stacks Whoa. of sticky, but Enchantress, last pick. Yo. Okay. A little wow. bit of Bat Rider mid, Night Stalker, Enchantress. This is like that Slardar Enchantress dual offlane that was just like the most obnoxious thing forever. So I'm kind of expecting the same thing here. So how how are you picturing these lanes? Bat mid, jug top, enchantress night soccer going down okay. aggressively. So bat mid versus invoker. I feel like that's a pretty tough matchup for the bat. Probably wouldn't be a lot of fun. Might get a little bit of help from like an oracle or oh, I suppose they can just send the bat rider solo top actually and have the oracle like kind of chill mid with the jug at first and go top if he's needed. Okay. That might be the more realistic thing actually. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. I mean bat rider can't kill timber saw, but he can, you know, farm, have some kind of lane presence there. And now the PL Final choice for Fox. They secured themselves some late game, that's for sure. Um, huh. Would not have guessed PL. I guess he is a defusal carrier. Why PL here? Uh, it's kind of like Slark, right? Where like the blink comes out, you dark packed, or you um, mm -hmm. go with the uh, the double or doppelganger, yeah, doppelganger yeah. or whatever. But I guess now it, it got delayed, right? It's now like point one or something, so maybe it's not quite as good as it used to be. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you look at it from the other perspective, Duop don't have great tools to deal with the PL. Like they don't really have any classic Phantom Lancer counters. Bat Riders kind of okay against him early on. You've got a lot of AOE damage to burn down the illusions, but once PL gets pretty big, I mean, they'll need to go like Maelstrom Night Stalker or something like Maelstrom Enchantress. I mean, I they'll need some way to deal with illusions. I, I think it could just be one of those opportunities where they see it as PL could just run amok, you know. I, mean, uh, I haven't think? seen Did, a good PL game in a while, honestly. Do you think they have the tools to really control a PL past, like, 30 minutes or so? Silence is brutal, dude. Like, I don't know. Like, That's true. I guess maybe maybe this is, like, when Doom was in games, and you're like, all right, we'll just pick, like, five good Doom targets. We'll pick Storm Spirit and Invoker, <laughs> and he doesn't know who to Doom, and they're just like, haha, we'll just do the same thing to wait to. But it's a 12-second cooldown. Like, can disrupt quite a few heroes in a fight. Yeah, well, we'll see how it uh, works out here. Of course, it'll always come down to execution, as with most Dota games. And both teams, a lot of team fight potential and a lot of heroes that like to skirmish earlier rather than later. So I think this is likely to be a, a fairly bloody match. Some eyes on the Enchantress here. Always a key hero in matches like this. Those early rotations, very important. See how uh, it kind of sets the tone for how the rest of her game will transpire. It looks like it will be Batrider up top. Right now, Enchantress in the dire oh. jungle. I was going to say, like, this is Mason's. This is mid. So This is the old mid enchantress from Mason. It Yo. looks like it, yeah. So I was wondering if the eye was Mason, and it seems so. Way2 picks up the Night Stalker as well as a Windlay, so he'll be on support. Jason grabs the Oracle. So they are going to aggro tri-lane with Snake King's Juggernaut, it looks like. Interesting. Very interesting. Four enchantress. <laughs> mid enchantress. All right. Enchantress versus and a Dodo Invoker, right? Is that, that that's a? I would think a tough matchup for the Enchantress, but I mean, maybe with creep with Untouchable, he can't really right click you reliably. Is this one of those builds like <laughs> where you don't even get the enchant? That was kind of a thing for a bit back when Offlane Enchantress was hanging I mean, out. It could be he does go level one Untouchable. So you're thinking about an Exord Invoker, right? He gets Forge Spirits, his right click's really hurt, he dominates you with minus armor, but if you've got level 3 Untouchable when those Forge Spirits are coming out, they they don't hurt that bad. They can't really attack you that effectively. There's there's some merit to it, I guess. We'll we'll see here, Trent. We're all going to learn together tonight. Yeah, this is going to be good. This you is know, good not something we see too often. Um, it will be that whole Timber versus Bat. No stick yet here for Solidarity. I'm sure he'll have it up shortly. Maybe Francis will try and get a little bit of damage on there first. Mm-hmm. Bat Rider starting with Wind Lace and Ring of Protection. Uh oh, down bottom, Earth Spirit. It takes a little bit of damage, but it'll be okay for now. This is a pretty support or pretty scary support cast for DW here alongside the Jug. A lot of kill potential with Oracle Night Stalker. You catch him with a Fortune's End. If Way Two can close the gap once he gets a couple levels, uh, especially during nighttime. Their damage output is pretty good. You put the Jug Spin on top of that and. These relatively squishy heroes on Fox will not be having a good time. If they ever catch the Shadow Shaman with that combo, eh, there's not going to be much old, old Methy yeah. here can do about it. Like, there's... Both these heroes are 
pretty awful in like tri lane scenarios, right? Earth Spirit is someone who doesn't like going into a crowd. He's very much solo ganker on the harassing the enemy mid lane. Shadow Shaman, of course, one of his abilities causes him to stand perfectly still in order to stun someone. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't tend to work out too well in the 3v3 scenario. Yeah. Especially when you have Oracle, who has um, both the, the Fates Edict to help out with that. Mm -hmm. Just like Fortune's End, the nukes, Way Too's going to be there with the silences and the, uh, the mini stuns. It's uh, so much control. And then that early damage from a Juggernaut with Blade Fury is brutal. Yeah. Well, pretty even so far in the try-on-try -try setup. Looking mid, Enchantress doing pretty well against the Invoker, winning by just a couple of last hits here. But is going for the Untouchable build, and so far, so good. Up in the top lane, also fairly even. Both heroes farming well, but Batrider with a slight edge. Looks like Earth Spirit could be looking to set something up in the tree line. Both sides being a little timid here. Fox respecting the kill power of DW, and I imagine DW thinking, well, guys, let's just be patient until it's nighttime, and then we'll try to find some kills. Like, what's even the play from Vidi, though? Like, he rolls in... I, I don't even know who his target would be, like, Jason, and then, like, a Night Soccer jumps you with a spinning... Like, if he rolls in, he's dead. He'll just get spun and die, because rolls is also, like, only way out. <laughs> You're right. I... You make a good point. I, I don't know what the game plan is. I mean, but the way he's he, positioned here, he's ready to go. He's like, guys, he give me the green light. At the same time, though, because he can't do anything mid. Like, what's he going to do against the. He's going to roll an enchantress and punch her, like, once? I don't even know if he'll get one punch off. Probably not. She's got not. boots. She's She'll already just run away. Yeah. Oh, he's going for it. All right, well, we'll see how it works out. He is level two at the very beginning of it. Oh, Mason actually does take a tower shot there, pops the attendance. Boulder oh, no. misses, Sunstrike misses. We're going for the crafty play to try to kick him back <laughs> into the tower in Sunstrike, but pretty far off the mark. Level. Yeah, I, so bonus points for big play uh, in theory, but yeah, alley oop three minutes. That was that would have been pretty sick. Yep, but a uh, little a little over par on that one, unfortunately. That would have been badass though if they actually pulled oh, yeah, it off. Let's yeah, be no, real. If that That's actually a... went off like. Uh oh, Damn. down bottom, old Methy, he's in some trouble. It's a three on one, Fortune's End connects, and this will be a quick demise for the Shadow Shaman. First blood drawn, Snake King will get credit for that one, and the Phantom Lancer will just move about the tree line and try to survive the onslaught. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, oh, Mason barely lives, gets off the attendance, now what turns to throw some right clicks the other day, or the other way. Yeah, missed the setup there, but well, Mason survives, that's what's important. But uh, yeah, Shadow Shaman going down, so. Draskal's return to a you know competitive Dota not going too well <laughs> so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's yeah, brutal. Oh, Francis mouth. is fine. Life's good up here, but uh, at the same time, Solidarity is just farming away, right? Like both of them are really in free farm heaven at this point. Even CS, really hard for the Timber Saw to find a kill on this hero, and I, I guess vice versa. Way too getting aggressive. It is now nighttime. Rotation oh, to the Brink. mid lane. Brink in trouble. Go back to the 90s, baby. It's a Disney movie all over again. And the Invoker will fall. Nice, easy rotation. 2 nil. The five minute mark. DW. I think this trade up top is also favorable to uh, to do wop, right? Because Timbersaw, he can do stuff. You can itemize, do stuff early. But ideally, you just kind of want to like, maybe clean up one fight and just farm up a Bloodstone or something. Yeah. Whereas Vat Rider, you know, Francis gets up into I, even the early drums is fine, but a blink dagger would probably be ideal with the lineup that he's currently working with. And you can see them just running into the side of Fox. And what are they going to do? Like you have a PL, who uh, again, much like this Timber Saw and Invoker, Dude, needs look a little bit this. of time to get going. Like he just cold snapped him and then didn't know what to do. He tried to queue up an <laughs> auto attack, and Mason just stood look, there. He's going back in. And now Brink is and like God. he's about to die again. I mean, Mace doesn't have enough mana. I don't think he Ooh. finds this kill, but he jukes the Deafening Blast. Uh, he gets off one more impetus. Oh, oh my God. God. Mason All on right. the solo mid Enchantress. All right. What in the world? <sighs> Top left. Well done. Arrow. You know. Jesus. I, I kind of feel bad for the Invoker, weird as that is to say. Cold Snap without getting off a single auto attack is just a, a what moment? Yeah, I mean, that's... There is some merit to this. I think we. So this is. This reminds me of the uh, TI5 qualifiers where I saw Swindle pick a Warlock against a Puck mid, and I remember cast. I was casting with Gareth, and I said, "Huh, this is a weird matchup. I wonder how the Warlock does against Puck." Three minutes later, it's mm, Puck's died twice, and Warlock yeah. is free farming because guess what? Phase Shift doesn't do anything against that huge damage over time. It was one of those weird counters that I'd never thought of, and this feels eerily reminiscent of that.
This kind of was a thing for a while too, right? Like, yeah. Man, when Enchantress had her, her heyday, but anyway, uh -oh. there's Meth, Meth doing his trouble. lovely stun. That's yep. something else. Standing there, getting chopped down. Another easy kill for the Dire. Timbersaw making the rotation, but he's totally dry. He's got 10 stick charges. No more mana to spare. Now way too just running circles around him. It is nighttime. Gets stunned up. Timber chain across, but... He doesn't have Whirling Death. Sunstrike oh, off the mark. Me. Way too caught by another Spirit Lance. He's low on HP, but he does have nothing else. He's dead. Okay, first kill of the game for Fox. Nicely done, but it does take them some time and a big rotation from the Timber Saw as Bat Rider continues to farm. I think that's what they call Space Created. Oh, well, well. And meanwhile, the chance is just like free mid. Like, it's not even being contested. Brink's like, all right, I have to go farm this camp because I'm at 20% HP against an enchantress. Yeah, all right, this invoker. And that pure damage, right? Uh, it's so nice against someone yeah. like this reactive armor stacking up on the timber saw. Not going to help you at all. And even though enchantress doesn't hurt as much as she used to now with uh, the max damage change and all that stuff, there's still a lot of items she can pick up to be scary. Dragon Lance, Aghanim Scepter, um, all. A lot of a lot of stuff that hit. can scale. She gets kicked back. Can they actually find this kill? <laughs> I don't think so. They don't have the right clicks. Way too just comes in. Viddy's forced back. One more impetus, and they'll find it. Way too might be able to set it up, but oh, uh oh, Meth's there. He sets up the sun strike. Minimal damage. Earth Spirit still falls. Meth tries to head for the hills. Enchantress actually just running in circles. Starts lobbing in some ults towards solidarity. And the rest of his team starting to converge. Way too coming back in. They find meth in the tree line. A few more auto attacks. They should get this kill. Brink TP's in, but it's not going to be oh, for much. Up. Flea finds him. He gets it with the lasso. Holds him in place. They lay in the right clicks. They've got dust ready and waiting for the ghost walk. Flame break enough to set up the kill. And Bat Rider will get credit for that one. A double as he makes his first rotation. Blink dagger on the horizon. Yeah, very nicely done there. Just a wind lace and tranquil, but so easy. Comes in, well, Shadow Shaman's low, and once he's down, who else is going to stop that lasso? I got yeah. nothing. Uh, Noobs you know, R Us is still down here punching creeps, but he's only got 24 lassos. He's been here the whole time. Oh, my God. Disaster. Brutal. It really is. Look at the top three on the CS chart. All 40-plus for the cores on DW. We'll see Oracle get taken out down bottom. Now Snake King, Sunstrike might connect it. Will, bringing him low. They'll finally get some kills, but can they even find this one? Chakram does connect, and there we go. They'll bring him down. Three to seven. Fox finally show a sign of life. See if the team fight recap can help us out. And well, not doing us any favors tonight, but a little bump in that net worth graph. Still a pretty big hill to climb. These are steps in the right direction. Now Mason comes on down. Meth almost dies. Gets off the shackle. A few more right oh clicks, God. and he should be able to bring him down. Will he survive through this? It looks like yes. Jason's here to keep him up. His Viddy comes rolling on in. DW without any more reinforcements inbound. They won't even need it. Mason bringing the Earth Spirit low. He's completely out of mana now, but does have some stick charges. Viddy with some nice footwork <laughs> into the tree line. Does juke him out. Kicks him back. But Impetus just does all the more damage. Jason gets brought down by Solidarity. Killing spree now for the Timber Saw. Not all bad for this Radiant team, but now Bat Rider rejoining the party. Oh He's got Someone drums of endurance. Oh, man. Solidarity. He might be in too deep now. Lasso. They're just bringing him further away. And he will fall. That killing spree he picked up will just give more gold to the Bat Rider. 800 in the bank. Level 9. Things getting out of control here for Fox. All right. Frank's done. Trent, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, oh, there are uh, Midas on that courier. That brown boots uh, ring. Oh, there's a glove. All right. That, that's a start to a Midas. Dude, this is so brutal, though. Like, you think of Invoker as this really scary, intimidating hero, and that's because in most games, he relies on that momentum. You go a lane dominator type build with uh, the Exhort, you have all this crazy damage, you have Forge Spirits, and then usually that allows you to dominate, get a fast Midas, and then use that to propel yourself into the mid game. Here, it's the opposite. Brink is on par with the Oracle of DW. And without that Midas, an Exhort Invoker doesn't really feel like a bully at all. In fact, he, he feels like, like the opposite. You know, he's a, he's a wimp. I mean, I'm sure when your Enchantress is just running in circles and they can't do anything. <laughs> like, he, like Mason's just running in figure eights, like pressing E and then hitting R a couple times. Yep. What a great item, too. Like, the Rise, you know, maybe we can bring back Enchantress with Raindrop. It synergizes so well with her. Her one problem is, of course, like, magic like and whatnot early on in the game. Like, you can even think about something like a PL. He's just like, oh, you know, I'll max Spirit Lance. She comes in. I'll be all slippery. Then uh, we'll, we'll just kill her. It'll be great. You know, my Shadow Shaman will have Q. Yeah. It's going to be a piece of cake. And then there's just this mid-Enchantress who suddenly comes down here while you're still poverty level. 
And she's got raindrops, which are giving her more regen. Throw out a couple more impetuses. Life's there, good. Go drums too, right? Like that uh, yeah. the whole int change again for drums makes them so good on her. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they also don't have great setup for Sunstrike. Like this team that Fox has is good in the sense it has a lot of heroes that are good at team fighting, but I don't know if they team fight that well together. They don't really have that big setup that allows their damage dealers to maximize. You know, I feel like they need a, a Void or a Tide Hunter or somebody with a big disable to kind of hold them in place so PL can get in there, so Timbersaw can do some AoE damage. Right now, it's like if Shadow Shaman doesn't find the best goddamn shackles of his life, everybody from DW just runs away from him, and that, that's pretty much it. And then they're able to reinitiate whenever they, they find the opportunity, and that's pretty much how all the fights have gone so far it's just dw controlling how and when they want to take the fights because they have so much more mobility and disable man tower Fra down. francis is so confident he bought drums and kept the other wind lace like, <laughs> no, I, I need max speed that's kind of cool actually I mean, maybe just going right into yule saying you know guys i don't even need blink well just it's going. so value anyway it's two th you lose a hundred gold to keep a wind lace the entire time you hold, like build a blink and it's so worth it yeah that's a you just sell point. it that's definitely a uh, hundred gold worth of value. You think about how long it takes to as far with the blink dagger. Ten minute mark. Especially when they have no stuns, really. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's all slows. Tomes coming out. That'll help the Earth Spirit, but both supports on Fox not yet level six, and both of them with huge ultimates, magnetize as well as the Vipes. Huge damage dealing abilities that are crippling the team fight of Fox right now. You look at the dire side, you've got darkness, you've got the false promise. They're ready to fight. They're killing this tier two faster than Fox are killing this tier one. It's a problem. Yeah. I mean, Shashaman's level four, so the, there's no like split push dream or something where he just like can punish any sort of a group up or something from doo up. Way two is getting free levels mid. There's a nice sock, which is always nice when you're playing this here on the support role. He's already got his brown boots. He's probably just going to go straight eggs. Yep. Phantom Lancer hanging around mid lane. We'll be able to make it away as the rotation comes. The rest of DW just rotated around the back. Bat riding up to 1400 gold. Still curious what he's got in store for his next item pickup. As it looks like our dire team may group up for a, a fight here. Phase boots, drums on the Enchantress. You were just talking about this, but. I do like it. It's it's kind of a different take on the hero, but gives her some really nasty right click. I mean, 12 minutes in, she's had a great performance, but you know, hitting for a 130 a pop of just regular right clicks is it's nothing to scoff at. Yeah, I mean, when you're running these like high movement speed heroes too, they're the benefits of that move speed gets completely like multiplied when you're working with a night stalker because mm -hmm. you're reducing their field of vision. So the possibility of like jukes and tree lines is like infinitely better. Yeah, that's true. Smoke up on the high ground, way too, scouts it out, sets it up for Francis, Vidi gets caught. They won't use the lasso on this, they'll just bring him down the old fashioned way. Now the lasso gets used, but Shackle comes out from meth. It'll hold him both in place and cost the Shadow Shaman his life. Now Phantom Lancer joins the party, but so far he hasn't really brought much to the table. He'll try to doppelganger away, and now they'll chase him down. They find the kill as Oracle dips him low with purifying flames. Nicely done as our dire team finds a three for nil. Great fight for them. We'll move into this tier one tower. Looks like uh, Battle Fury on the way for Snake King. Oh, they are feeling the spoils of their fights here. Damn, that's harsh, man. You're this far ahead and you still go Battle Fury? Yeah. No mercy, Snake King. He's not going like Yasha or something. He doesn't even want to join his team. He's just like, yo, you guys have got this. I am just going to go hit creeps for the next 20 minutes or so. Maybe I'll see you up in their base. Maybe not. They might GG first. Well, there's also a point where you're this far ahead in the game, and early Battle Fury gives you a hell of a lot of right-click damage. You've got the support from Oracle and Nature's Attendance on the Enchantress. Snake King can just go this damage-based item, hop into fights, you know, Omni Slash, cleave around, and he's got the supporting cast to help keep him alive through that. He can get away going this... Uh, less survivability based build and then also have the farm to rely on here's the midas on invoker 14 minutes uh, definitely not ideal but given how rough of a laning <laughs> stage he had th this isn't the worst i mean he still has a midas and a, a reasonable timing i mean you got to give definitely, him some credit uh, here he made the most of it someone who is very happy that data is down i would say you know <laughs> but doesn't want to see that average right now it's like, uh, you know god bless <laughs> hey, i don't want to pick on the open qualifier team too much these are these are the you know, the guys that don't get a lot of face time, a lot of recognition in the Tier 1 scene, but they're in that, like, you know, upper 95th percentile, 99th percentile of all players in Dota. You know, it can't be Dude, too hard on them. they way too. Yeah, like, these guys are badass. Look at them. No, I, like, I'm saying, like, 
It's not like this is ET or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, way too stunned up. Sunstrike connects. They might be able to find a kill here, and they certainly shall. The See? solitary judge picks it up. They, they can do this. It's fine. Vanguard Timbersaw. Okay. I love you way too. It's fine. I didn't. All right. I didn't. I don't know if I've seen this build recently. Vanguard that's, Timber. Uh, that's something. Maybe just like can't get into a bloodstone. I mean, it helps against the jug, sure. A lot of uh, pure damage. The right clicks well. from the nice soccer would have been kind of annoying, but the magic damage is still kind of frustrating. We'll see if it helps him here. Initiation gets brought low. Impetus dips him to one hit, and Bat Rider will be able to finish him off. France is still feeling very confident here as Vidi tries to make it away. He'll get chased down. Phantom Lancer, doppelganger away. It's a bit of a head start. They might just dive this tower, though. Fortune's End connects. Mason tanking up the tower. Impetus one. Impetus two not coming. Instead, they look towards Meth. That is a lot of damage. That's half his HP in one Impetus. Flame Break. They might be able to just set up this kill straight up. Shadow Shaman <laughs> with no options gets chased down and brought down past the tier two. They still got a tier one tower standing in this lane. DW do not care at all. Hey, see, wait, he's just pinging it like, yo, guys. Uh, there's a build in there. Free gold. This is brutal, dude. This is uh, a beatdown. Group B is uh, B for beatdown. Invitational. <laughs> the Invitational. <laughs> this PL is so broke, too. He's, he's had to go back for the drums. He's got 1,100 gold. They lost their courier, even? I didn't catch that, but that's unfortunate. A little goldfish. LGD's Golden Skipper. I don't know if I've ever seen this courier before. Where the hell did this come from? I didn't know LGD had a, a Golden Fish courier. Well done, Meth. I still haven't even seen... Oh, I see. Oh, there you go. How exciting. Have you ever seen this thing? Uh, briefly. But I, 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 re I recognize it. I, don't, okay. I do not own one. I do not own the Golden Skipper. So, oh, I don't have a great collection of couriers, but I've seen uh, a lot of them. So these days, when I see a new courier, I'm usually... I'm, that, that's a rare moment, and Meth is living up to the hype here. All right, well, Brink has surpassed his Midas. He now has the Bracer. So a little All bit right. of tank ability here. Dude, Maybe this they drum's can make coming. a play. Oh, Meth is still level four. All right, that's kind of harsh. Here we go. On to Mason. Oh, my God. Meth is level four. Mason gets down to about half HP, but now break caught by the lasso. Silence comes onto the Bat Rider, but it does not make a difference. Their invoker will fall straight away. Bat Rider flying into the tree line. Arrest of Fox will just back up behind the tower. Vidi, you are so brave. He walks up. They won't be able to punish it, but I can't believe that Shadow Shaman is level four. Were they smoked up there? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, they had ward vision. I Maybe they know. were. So I'll, I'll just say they were smoked. Okay, we'll, sure. we'll assume. They were smoked. Great bait, guys. But, like, I mean, feed this guy a Toma knowledge or something. <laughs> like, Gotta, yeah, maybe he's illiterate. So, yeah, but there's there's a point when you pick a hero like that where, you, you, as a team, you have to say, all right, guys, we need Rasta Wards. They are a game winning spell for what we're trying to achieve here. Bat Rider's just going to walk away. He's going to fly to the high ground. Right now, Francis is thinking about turning around. Making a play. He will just TP home. And some space is created. That's four heroes distracted. They don't even come close to finding a kill. They don't even really find the initiation. As uh, now Francis picks up the four staff. Very nice. Well, Roche is an option pretty much whenever they would like. I mean, Mason, of course, having untouchable. All right, yeah, they're just going to do it now. It is go time. They, they know they're all top. They saw the action happen on their old uh, Bat Rider. They haven't made any rotation back past this ward. And in they go. All right. Easy Roche. Looks like this baby will be completely uncontested. Slowly but surely, they'll bring it down. Now, who do they give the Aegis to? Is it Mason or Snake King? It looks like Mason. I think Snake King is a little bit too focused on farming right now to be the prized Aegis carrier. Mason feels like that frontliner that's been up in the front, but I'm completely wrong. So, okay. <laughs> Juggernaut gets it. I mean, they can't kill him, I assume. It's true. So. They, they can't kill any of them. Let's be real. Yeah, I mean, Mason, he doesn't really want to be in the fight. Can they really jump him? Not necessarily. Yeah. I think mean, he's got to get in there, press that air button. For what it's worth, the cores on Fox are actually farming okay. Like, they're, they're not ahead, but for they're... situation. Th they're keeping pace. You know, they're like not really falling game. further behind. Yeah. But the supports is really where there's a big disparity. We've talked about the Shadow Shaman. He's now level 5, low 
uh, farm or spirit. He's doing a little bit better, still pretty far behind. The supports on the dire are living the dream way too. He's almost as farmed as the invoker. He has an Aghanim Scepter at 19 minutes as a support. That's incredible. Yeah, and that's with a bat rider on your team. Like that item is just so valuable in a game like this. And well, uh, that looks like there was a, a solo kill attempt up there with the Omni Slash, but couldn't quite find it. Vanguard Timber doing work. You're all welcome. Vanguard go, plus solitary. the 15 uh, reactive armor charges there. That's that's quite a bit of mitigation. I mean, it is junk. like the one hero it's going to help them with, right? Well, I mean, yep. I guess the Night Stalker too. But in terms of like yeah. that solo kill potential, yeah, gaming. pretty much. Tier 2 tower up top, turn to rubble. Only one outer tower remains for our Radiant squad. It is this Tier 2 in the mid. They've got some okay ward coverage down. They've got at least one outside of the base. Toma Knowledge at the 20-minute mark. Shadow Shaman, that gets him so close to that precious level 6. He's trying to leech in the lane. He has to TP home. Oh, he's got the Tome at home. All right, that's the level 6, baby. The Vipes are coming out. These better be some huge <laughs> Serpent wards, I'm telling you. Uh, the best damn wards you've ever seen. Let's see, snaking his phase boots. All right, wait, he doesn't have phase boots. Mason has phase boots. So uh, PL down bottom, just hanging out. Francis locks him with the lasso, and they'll find this. He tries to doppelganger out, but Snake King just brings him down. Cocky PL gets put six feet under. Maybe they can uh, ward trap the night stalker. I'm still going with the wards, you know. Maybe we'll ward trap the <laughs> night stalker or the uh, the oracle. <laughs> Batrider will fly out, give it to a phase out. Solitary. God, look how fast oh, the ward. Enchantress kills him. It's so brutal. Now silenced up. He's trying to live. Oh, nice silence. That was. I think Francis was going to jump that. Yeah, he certainly was. Well done by the Earth Spirit. Okay. Tier 2 Tower mid is still down, though. So all the outer towers have been destroyed. Fox with very limited space to farm. Brink rolling the dice outside of the base, trying to use that Midas. Now picks up the soul boost, or the point booster, rather. But no mercy from Mason. He's now gone for the Orchid. Oh, there's the nice lasso. Connects onto the Timber Saw. Follow-up damage. The silence from way to during nighttime. This is just too brutal. The lockdown's too much, and the Timber will fall. He's got a buyback. He burns it right away. Rasta <laughs> drops the wards, but he will fall right after way to Does end up going down. Timber Saw gets a kill after the buyback. A two for one, though, and the Rasta wards not really doing that much. DW able to kind of uh, make it out. They lose the Aegis. Jug coming right back up as they bring down the Earth Spirit. Now Mason taking some right clicks. Losing some of that precious mana, but he will survive through it. Easy peasy. Solitary getting deep out of the base. Needs to be a little bit careful here. They actually nice. bring down Francis, but now the Omni Slash destroying the creeps. Brink gets a little bit lucky there. Now Jason getting low. Brink will get brought down. Sunstrike connects, but doesn't do a hell of a lot. Jason won't be able to survive through the Wrath of the Phantom Lancer. It's a bloodbath, and in the end, Fox make a surprising hold. I mean, it was a good play, right? The Timber gets that big kill streak. It's worth his death. Uh, this is where PL really turns on, so you want to take fights with that defusal. The question is, will he live at the end? No. And the answer is no. And in the end, I think that still favors DW. They force the buyback. They kill the Timber Saw again. Of course, team fight recap not helping us out too much with an overview of the fight. But with all of that considered... Net worth gain for DW, but Fox hold on to their base. They don't lose any Tier 3 towers, so they do get another go at it. I mean, the game's still going, so <laughs> that's, they, hey, can, they can take that. In that stride. is something. It's just, I mean, this is one of those games that's just so difficult, right? The, the lanes, they matched up very nicely for Doo-Wop, did a very good job in their, their rotations and everything. That pressure down the bottom lane. They picked heroes that made Shadow Shaman and Earth Spirit useless for the first five minutes. And, like, as Shadow Shaman, sure, you can be useless for the first five minutes if you're farming and doing stuff, but obviously he got no space, wasn't, like, pulling or anything like that, and then he yeah. was level four at 20 minutes. So, what can you do? Yep, it's it's tough. And now it looks like some Yule's Scepters on the way. Bat Rider will have his before too long. Oracle, well, he's got a Staff of Wizardry, so it could be a couple things here. Four Staff might not be a bad choice also. They go right in onto the PL. He has to defuse himself once more to get rid of the Orchid. Make Mason pretty happy with that. That's an 18-second cooldown in exchange for something that has a finite amount of charges. As far as he's concerned, that's a it's a good deal. And I, I don't think he's going to find any like you know bargains on that uh, that next recipe or anything. I mean, he just wants some bots, man. 
<laughs> I helped the guy out. Doesn't want to have to buy defusal level two right away. We got a, a two for one on defusal charges today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I really need it, guys. Help the guy out here. Juggernaut getting pretty scary though. Snake King. Oh, this ward. Goal. Might be a winner. Oh, they see him. He's too close. Francis. Taking a look here. Snaking. Cold snaps. We'll be able to spin out of it. Radiant do have a glyph. Definitely some potential to make a hold here, but remember the Timber Salt does not have buyback, so if they're able to pop him, this ends up being a very easy fight for the Dire. Still not so easy for them to break high ground, though. Even with this pretty massive lead, they have to respect the power of Team Fox. Yeah, it's pretty obnoxious, right? I mean, if the Agnum Scepter comes out from Brink, it gets even worse. Plenty of damage. Still always going to be a squishy hero in Enchantress. I mean, unless you're getting him to, like, a Scotty or something. Yeah. Like, da damage is going to hurt. When it comes to that giant dumping of a, a meatball in your face and whatnot. Batrider, again, another hero that doesn't get that tanky as well. You, you do like to get that eventual BKB. Maybe they can delay it out to that uh, god tier PL. Kind of the namesake of the hero, right? Where he, like, 1v5s an entire team because he's so yeah. frustrating to deal with. I, mean, I think some of that is why DW, not only just because they've been outskilling them, but they've been trying to keep this a high octane high pressure game so the pl just doesn't have anywhere to farm I mean, usually you'll see a pl go for boots of travel way earlier than this try and move around the map utilize that the farming areas that uh, are open but here he was forced into drums so he could survive and then forced into the defusal right away so he could do at least a little bit of damage and not that he's had too many opportunities to farm if he would have had bot's but it, it really hurts seeing the pl landlocked like this where he's forced to just slowly get this this trickle of creeps coming towards the base. Now a full Scotty up on the jug. Wow. Yep. Nice item choice just from Snake King. Like, he got that Battle Fury to help him farm quick, but then he didn't go for, like, crazy late game items. He just got an SNY and a Scotty, and he's just extremely difficult to deal with right now. And this is Dire Vision we're looking at here. He sees three, sometimes four heroes. A free Tier 3 tower, it looks like. I mean... Fox are just, this is their base, and they're like huddled up behind the tier fours even, just afraid of DW diving. Yeah, they can really pick their moment here with Lasso and Night Stalker Vision. Even this is like worrisome for NRS. Yep. Absolutely. Enchantress going for uh, probably that Assault Karas now. Plate Mail in tow, 2600 gold. Always makes uh, sieging a little bit easier. And just a great item to have on Enchantress. Relatively low armor hero. Anything with attack speed, good on her. <clears throat> I always thought Orchid was just an item kind of designed for Enchantress in that regard. I mean, not not the play style she's often gone for, but she just loves all those stats. And this kind of a game, the Orchid is just that perfect third item. Kind of like how uh, some players like uh, the Nature's Prophet when you go the, the phase drum Orchid build. It gives you really yeah. good right clicks and just really solid stats all around. I mean, it gives her everything she wants, right? Like a little bit of attack speed, yeah. uh, a nice way to hold someone in, you know, depending on the hero, in place while you just throw out some impetus charges. So, mm -hmm. good little mm -hmm. item hero combination. No doubt, good sir. One minute until Roche comes <laughs> up. My God, somebody kill something. This is Fox sitting in their base going, well, guys, we I could, think. Uh, call we, it the foxhole. Yeah, the foxhole. I mean, look at this is basically where they have to farm. About like that. They've got no wards down. They're just. This is not a fun game for them right now. They're smoked yeah, but up. This is 12 charges bloodstone. This is Solitary's time. That's he's actually ready, true. Man. This is one fight. You know, he's farming up like crazy thanks to the bloodstone charges. Maybe he'll get like a, uh, a blink dagger. He could jump in and maybe disrupt Mason. Make it so he can't just stand in the single spot and do everything. Okay, well, now he's a Shiva's guy. So maybe wow. I like that. that uh, not the AC, scary. but it gives you some extra burst damage and great against the PL illusions. An aspect that I yeah. kind of forgot about. One thing, it does give him more mana to be burned here. True. So, you know, maybe the dream is alive for NRS. Also gives him more mana to check out more impetuses, which has been a bottleneck in pretty much every fight we've seen. <laughs> but, yeah, you can... There's there's always two sides to every coin, right, Trent? <laughs> one, one could say. Oh, in the foxhole he goes. Ooh, nice. Francis gets counter-initiated on. Beautifully done by Fox. They pop the All Bat right, Rider. 
Now they jump out of the base. Silence onto Solitary. Out comes the Shivas from Mace and Vidi getting low, but he does manage to get off his ult. Now the Vipes come. Oh, the Battle Fury doing so much from Snake King. He brings down one. Make it two. Soon to be three. Brink. He's invisible, but Snake King can't quite find it on the back line. They're chasing down the Timber Saw. Say goodnight to your 12 Bloodstone charges. A one for three. Even with the brilliant counter initiation, Fox just can't handle it. I think a lot of that coming from Snake King. Just a perfect Omni Slash on the back line, getting so much out of that Scotty uh, Battle Fury combo. Looks like it might be. They haven't tapped out quite yet. Open Qualifier team sticking with it here. Mm -hmm. Timbersaw is back up. He does have a buyback also. Potential two lives to throw away for the life of the barracks. Oh. Uh, nope, not happening. Mid lane falls. And, uh, yeah, and they have Courier in the pit too. Back out. Mm -hmm. Look at, Go right on in. Look at these dire wards, dude. They've just one, two, three, just completely blocking them in. And they have a Night Stalker. Like, it doesn't get any worse than that if you're Fox. And a gem on the Night Stalker with a BKB 600 gold away. They'll walk back right into Roche. Snake King has uh, a Bissell Blade on the way. No biggie. Casual, you know. Yep. Keeping things cash. Well. DW, 30k net worth ahead, 20k experience. Oh, they're going for it, man. They are smoking up. This was not spotted by a ward. A little slow. The moment of they, truth. They're still going for it. Fox they're committed like, to the charge. Cocky. Way too. They see him, and then they back out, and now they hand it over to the Bat Rider. He gets an initiation. Way too will survive through it. Vidi gets pushed back. Meth gets brought down in silence before he can even bring down the wards. And this Radiant team is just dropping like flies. Good game is called. They were in Hail Mary mode. And with that backfire, they've had enough. 30 minutes. DW will be moving on to face da -da 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 -da, Team NP in our next best of one matchup. Very nice. All right. This is uh, when I was looking at the schedule today, I was going to say this is exactly what I was hoping for. I think everyone was. So mm -hmm. M God in the stack, the boys from Doo Wop. As we have been told, that is what they would love to be called, and yep. so I shall do so. Doo-wop. I wonder where They're that ready, name man. came from. I, I feel like their names just keep getting crazier and crazier. I'm for NP's second game ever, and possibly, you know, I mean, who's going to remain undefeated Yeah. in their new fall season? <laughs> we'll see. A lot on the line here. What a brutal game for Fox supports, though. Vidi ending that 0-7, yeah. Meth ending it 0-9. And their Invoker ending the game 0-6. and six. Just brutal scores to see. Speaks to how difficult of a laning phase they had just across the board. Tough well stuff. Well picked by Doo-Wop, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great draft. We did not expect the Enchantress mid. Ended the game undefeated, 9-0-18. and 18. Mason with the right call. Cool stuff. So, all right, Trent, we get another break here. Three more best of ones coming up for you tonight. Next one gets started in about 20 minutes' time. Half past the hour is when the next match will be underway. Stick with us, folks, because we've got plenty more Dota 2 coming. This is the Northern Arena Beat Invitational by Bell. I'm Zayori. He's Mott Packs. We're from Moonduck TV. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back.